Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can set up a new account in the chart of accounts. So perhaps you've gone to do the bank rec. We'll go in and have a look at the bank rec here and you've gone to reconcile an item. And you're looking down your options here for where you can reconcile this four and a half thousand dollars. You're looking down and there's just nothing that really fits where you want to put it. So rather than put it into a category where it doesn't really fit, you would prefer to create an entire new category because perhaps there's going to be more of these transactions and you want to be able to put them to this particular account and have them show up on your profit and loss as a separate line item. So when you want to create a new account, you're going to have to go into the chart of accounts menu. So we're going to go to the accounting menu, scroll down, chart of accounts. And here we go, we're in the chart of accounts now. You do have to be a little bit careful here because as you can see, there's different types of accounts. You've got assets, liabilities, equity, expense, and revenue. And of course, all of these operate in a different way and will flow through to different parts of your reports. For example, revenue and expense will flow through to the profit and loss, whereas assets, liabilities, and equity will flow through to the balance sheet. So we're going to go add account. And there's a good little diagram here that shows you how it sort of works. So when you go account type, you'll see under assets, there's current assets, fixed assets, inventory, non-current asset prepayment. And over here, we know that assets is part of the balance sheet, so it'll show us where it all fits in. So I'll start with profit and loss first because that's where it all starts. Uh, in the income, you've got revenue and sales. Uh, then you've got your direct costs, which is uh, a cost of sale. It might be for inventory purchases or for input costs into manufacturing, that sort of thing. You've got other income, which might be bank interest. It'd generally be income that isn't your core operating income. So it might be bank interest. It might be a gain on sale of an asset, something like that. Not your normal sales, that would go up the top here. And then you've got your expenses. So you've got your normal expenses, your general overheads, that might be your utilities, your rent, um, things like that. Items that you have to pay regardless of how much revenue you're turning over. Um, and your depreciation, this is the write down in your assets. For example, um, how much a motor vehicle or a piece of machinery might depreciate every year. And then that, that flows through to the balance sheet. We've got our current assets, which uh, would generally be uh, maybe like a short term loan that you've made to someone else, uh, maybe an employee or a, um, another commercial entity. Um, inventory, the stock that you sell, prepayments. When you prepay for something, that is um, basically an asset because you have given handed money over for an item you haven't received yet. Um, we've got fixed assets, which is like your motor vehicles, machinery, and other things like that. Non-current assets. For example, you might have goodwill on purchase of the business. That would be a non-current asset or some other kind of intangible or longer term investment. Current liabilities would be, say, short-term loans under a year. Um, maybe um, someone's paid you a deposit. A customer might, might have paid you a deposit. That would be a current liability. Um, we've got non-current liabilities. That would be a loan that you've taken out that would go over multiple years for a motor vehicle. And we've got equity, which is basically your assets minus liabilities. Or another way of looking at it is if you liquidated all your assets and paid up all your liabilities, your equity would be what you're left over with after sort of folding the business and paying everything out. So let's just say we've got an expense category we want to enter that it doesn't show up in the expense list. So we've had a bit of a closer look at expenses 
and made sure that it isn't here. So let's just say that we want to have a separate category for computer expenses, computer sort of consumable items that wouldn't be regarded as capital and wouldn't be regarded as an office expense. So we want to set up a, a new expense for that. We've had a look and we've we know it's not a direct cost, we it's not depreciation, it's just going to be a general expense account and we want to also keep the numerical numbers in line. So we can see here that all the normal expense items go to 400 accounts. So we'll find one that has a bit of an opening here. We can see there's some gaps here between 420 and 425. We're not too worried about alphabetical ordering. Well, let's say we do want to have the, the numerical values matching alphabetical ordering. So we can see here, computer would come after cleaning. So we're going to put it at to 409. So we're going to go add account, account type, scroll down to expense. The code is going to be 409. And we're just going to call it computer expenses. The default tax code is going to be GST on expenses. We don't want to show it in the dashboard watch list. We Perhaps we do want to include it in expense claims. This means when an employee pays for something out of their own pocket or maybe even a director or someone like that, a business owner, pays for it from a personal bank account and they want to have the business then reimburse them for that. So they put in an expense claim to be reimbursed and they want to be able to pick up computer expenses on that expense claim. Enable payments to this account, that's not applicable for this. You can put in a description here if you want. So we might just say low value computer consumables under $1,000. Because anything over 1,000 we'd put to a capital account. Yeah, so this would be like, um, you know, keyboards, mouses, cables, anything like that. So we'll go save. Now, we're going to go here. We want to put this to our new account. It's not coming up. We've got computer equipment there, but that is a capital account, not the expense account we just created. So for it to come up, we're going to have to do a refresh. And then we'll do a search again. And there it is, except for I've spelled it incorrectly. But we'll go back and fix that. Create a new category for office works or Southside office supplies. It's already in there. And we'll just say it was a new keyboard. A four and a half thousand dollar keyboard. So as you can see, guys, I haven't picked a very good example here, being four and a half thousand dollars, because that would probably be capital for sure, unless it was, you know, like a hundred keyboards or something. Or let's just say, let's just say we're kidding out the office, the whole office with new keyboards. And they cost $45 each. New keyboards multiplied by 100. So we can see it's computer expenses. It's not capital. GST on expenses. So we're going to OK that. Now I need to go back here and fix up my error for where I spelt the account incorrectly. And now if we run a P&L, we're going to see that $4,500 come up under the computer expenses category that we just created. So I'm going to open up the dates here. And there it is. You'll notice it's not four and a half thousand dollars because I've taken out the GST. But if we go in and have a closer look at this, we can see the gross was four and a half, GST 409, and the net amount going to the computer expense account 4090. So it's pretty simple, guys. 
Xero provides a pretty good default chart of accounts list, or maybe your accountant might have set it up when they um, rolled over or set up your Xero and rolled, it, rolled over your chart of accounts from a previous system or from a, an old profit and loss. But there will be times when you will want to put something to a new account that doesn't exist. So the process in general is pretty straightforward. The only thing that you have to be a bit careful with, like I was saying before, is knowing the difference between your assets, your liabilities, your revenue expense, and your equity. So they got this diagram here that can help you. Your accountant can help you as well. We can help you if you're not sure. That's the main thing you got to be careful of. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, guys, if you've got any questions, hit us up in the comment section below. We'll, we'll do what we can to help. If you want to book in a training session, there will be a link in the, in the description. We can do some one-on-one -on -one training with you or train to a group of staff at your workplace. Other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.